plays no favor. It could happen to you. For KD3, page 227. In the diary of fate. Yes, here it is. The name Edward Matthews. Occupation, farmer. A universally respected endeavor, but frustrating to you, Edward, because it entails hard work and no prospect of immediate wealth. You sold your farm, and with your wife, Ida, left for the city where you thought a man with money in his pocket could not fail. But again, you failed. Soon your money was gone. And you were faced with a decision. And you chose for evil. And then I, fate, intervened with little things. A broken bottle lying in the rust of a country road. A forgotten automobile jack. A flat tire. Yes, they changed the whole course of your life. And now, Edward Matthews, because of those little things, your life will soon be destroyed. Soon it will be time for the final entry under the name Edward Matthews. When I have written, I will read from his record in The Diary of Fate. <laughs> After the old man goes to bed, I'll sneak into his room, take care of him, and get the money. Then we'll hide it outside under that big rock by the spring house. He'll recognize you, Ed. No, Ida. He won't recognize me. He'll be dead. Yes, in the life of Edward Matthews, a grim and ruthless decision was made. A decision for evil. It was then that I, fate again began to employ the trivial, seemingly unimportant things that determined the inevitable outcome. It is ever thus. Trifles? Yes. Remember how it all started, Edward? You and your wife had left Crane City and were driving over a lonely country road in a second-hand car you had fought with the last of your money. Ned, I think selling the farm was a mistake. Why? Just because we had a little bad luck so far? No. With the farm, we had a home and a roof over our heads. Look, Ida, a farm spells work and more work and nothing more. And what about you in Crane City? You worked every day and most of every night, seeing people, talking business, worrying. That's another story. I made a mistake in Crane City. I trusted the wrong man, that's all. Well, I'm not crying for calico and a butter churn. I just think that farming's the thing you know best. Either when we get to St. Louis and I'm underway with Roberts and his friends, you'll see things differently. I thought you needed money before you could go into business with Mr. Roberts. I do. I need a decent stake, but that won't be hard to raise. Look, I'm no fool rider. I know a good thing. Yeah, look out. That broken bottle. Oh, yeah, watch out. <laughs> broken bottle in your pack. It was a little thing. And now you were stopped on a country road with a flat tire. Who would be stupid enough to throw a broken bottle into a wagon? Well, the world's full of stupid people. Hey. Ida, can you move the tools? I have the jack right here alongside the spare tire. 
I'm sorry, dear. In the confusion of packing, I must have taken it out and left it in the garage. Oh, you're constantly forgetting things. Well, darling, I do try to be careful. Oh, look, you had a farmhouse. Maybe we can have to get help there. Well, it's our only hope. Well, what do you want now? Oh, I'm sorry, stranger. I thought you were someone else. Someone else? <laughs> but not exactly a friend, though. Hardly. You know, count named Luke Huggins. But my hired hands in yesterday eh? had to run him off the place. Now, sir, what can I do for you? Well, I got a flat tire and I don't have a jack in my car. Well, I guess I can get you out all right. You're alone? No, oh, my wife's with me in the car. Well, touch her. You might as well be comfortable in here. You folks hungry? Well, yeah, now that you mention it. Guess it's been a good five hours since we had lunch. Look, we'll be glad to pay for it. Never mind, lad. Can your wife cook? Certainly can. She was raised on a farm. Good. Get her. I'm alone here now, and I'm not much of a hand around the stove. I've got the food, and you've got the cook. We can get along all right. So you see, Mr. Blake, that was the last I had to do with farming. And uh, you, Mrs. Matthews, uh, how do you feel about your husband leaving the land? I, I don't know, Mr. Blake. It's up to Ed. No, I'll admit. He'll never be a millionaire still in the land, even with taxes and the like. But uh, I don't know many hungry farmers. You see, Ed, you may not get rich. I do but... Mr. Blake isn't interested in our personal problems. You're wrong, young man. I am interested. What do you mean? Well, you see, I need help. I need a man in the field, and Mrs. Matthews can take care of the house. And I can pay you well. All right. All right. The deal. Yes, Edward. Because of little things, a broken bottle and the forgotten jack. You now had an opportunity to return to farming, the work you knew best. But an hour later, as you walked through the dimly lighted hall towards Cyrus Blake's room, you thought only of St. Louis and Mr. Roberts and the easy riches that awaited you if you had the initial investment. You were about to knock on that half-open door when you saw something, something that rooted you to your tracks. In the half-shadows of his room, Cyrus Blake was hiding a small metal box behind some loose bricks of the fireplace. Quickly, you retraced your steps in silence until you were yards from the bedroom. Then, you approached again, noisily. Uh, 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 Mr. Blake! Oh, it's you, uh, Yes, sir. Thought I'd check with you about the morning chores. Uh, may I come in? Yes, yes, of course. Well, thank you, Mr. Blake. Uh, now, sir, about tomorrow... Um... You're a pretty spy, aren't you? Right. What? What do you mean, Mr. Blake? Come in here this way. The first day on the job. Right. Oh, oh, I, I see what you mean. Sort of. Uh, well, uh, polishing the apple a bit, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, that's it. But I'll just choke you, Ed. I'm glad to see you're anxious to get to him. Yes, sir. I am anxious to get going. Hello there. Good morning. Hello. Good morning, folks. My name's Tuttle. Oh, Mr. Tuttle, the sheriff. Mr. Blake mentioned that you'd be here early. Well, I guess I ain't. Yes, it's all ten years. Yeah, we're well, glad night, Mr. Tuttle. I'm Eddie Matthews, and that's my wife, Ida. Yeah. We've gone to work for Mr. Blake. Yeah, glad to hear that. I'm sure you're going to work out better than that, too. You come in. Uh, what was he like, Sheriff? <laughs> bad, mister. But he's strong enough to do the work of three men. He's a bad one. Where is he now? Yeah, it's hard to say. Probably up the hill some days. Well, do you think he's come back here to make trouble for Mr. Blake or something like it's hard to say, ma'am. He's tired, so I get something fierce for him to do. Well, uh, I'll keep my eyes open, Sheriff. 
Oh, is that the mail for Mr. Blake? Yeah, just some papers and that game. Here you are. Thanks, sir. Yeah, <clears throat> you folks tomorrow, I reckon. They're glad you're going to be with us. Fair right now. Bye, sir. Yeah, I'm sorry to hear that. That note, sir. Don't worry, Ida. I don't think we'll be around here too long. What? Why, Ida, only a minute ago you said things were all right, that we wouldn't be running out. No, we won't be, Ida. Not for a while, anyway. Not before I can get my hands on Cyrus Blake's strong box. Yes, Edward Matthews. You have made your decision. A decision for evil. And even as you chose, a plan was set in motion. And the end for you was certain. Soon there would be no turning back. And soon I would be able to record your final entry in the Diary of Fate. <laughs> Ida, look. 
Nobody knows Luke is dead. But everybody knows he's a little off. Uh, you know, strong, hot-tempered. And he hated old Cyrus Blake. Now we... Hey, hey, who's that? Where? There. There in the car on the road. The sheriff. I forgot about him. Oh, he's going to stop at the house, Ed. Yeah, I know it. I know it. Look, you go up there and keep him occupied. I'll do this job alone. Just don't let him or the old man come down here I'm finished, you hear? All right, Ed, I'll try, but hurry. Uh, more coffee, Sheriff? Thank you. Uh, Mighty fine pie, Sheriff. Mighty fine. Hey, yeah, you're a lucky man to have a woman like that if you can see. You're right. Don't have to worry about a thing now. So, Arthur, what's Ed doing today? Oh, uh, Ed? Why, uh, um, I think he went out to fix fences, Mr. Blake. There. See, Ed? His own initiative. I didn't say a word about fences. Fences, and that Ed is an A bomb partner. Yeah, that's right. It's comforting to know your place is in good hands. Yep. I'm getting long in years now. I can't get around like I used to. <laughs> I'm sort of looking for a nice couple to take over this farm. Yes, you do, sir. You really mean that? Yeah, I sure do. And uh, you can't tell, uh, I might have found them. Yeah. What do you think of that, Addict? Think of what? Why, Miss Matthews, you think you're looking out that window? You didn't hear a word you said. <laughs> Go on out there anyway. Oh, it's nothing, Sheriff, nothing. I... Ah, sure, that's it, huh? <laughs> yes, sir, I guess that old goat just can't hold ladies' interest when she's got a man like that there, Eddie, right? Huh? He comes up the path now. Yeah, you, you better cut a big piece of that pie for him, I eh? Uh, been away, sir. Is there anything you look? No, he hasn't been back. Uh, Maybe he won't come back. That's uh, right. Uh, uh, I'd be too sure. He's a bit of better speak him. Hey, hello there, Ed. Oh, hi, Sheriff. Hello, Mr. Blake. Hi there. Uh, here you've been fixing fences, Ed. Yeah, down in that corner pasture. Uh, I saw something down there, too. Yeah? Ed, you... I saw a man, big man, moving through the trees outside the fence. He sure seemed to be trying to keep out of sight, but I I caught him looking me over. Eh? Yeah. Yeah. Sheriff, it sounds just like you. You be careful. He's mad there's no telling what he might do. Yes, Edward. It was working out even better than you would hope. Your story of seeing a man lurking in the trees convinced Sheriff Tuttle beyond doubt that Luke had come back. Now you were ready. After the sheriff left, old Mr. Blake went to the barn, leaving you and Ida... Alone in the house. That was your chance. You spoke swiftly, urgently, as you outlined your plan. Now, you listen to me, Ida. The sheriff is positive now that Luke is back. Anything that happens will be blamed on him. Luke is dead, huh? Yes, yes, but only you and I know that. Don't you see what a perfect alibi it is? Ed, I... I'm afraid. Well, don't be. Nothing can go wrong. Now, here's what we'll do. Tonight after the old man goes to bed, I'll sneak into his room, take care of him, and get the money. Then we'll hide it outside under the big rock by that spring house. He'll recognize you, Ed. No, either. He won't recognize me. He'll be dead. Dead? Dead? You mean you're going to kill him? Oh, no, Ed. Oh, no. That's the only sure way. He'll be dead in a year or two anyway. Murder, Ed. Listen to me. Listen to me now. Come here to the front room. Here. Now, this closet's got a heavy oak door. You wouldn't have a chance of breaking it down, now, would you? No, of course not. And look inside here. See this little hole in the wall? Well, the key will fit just right in there. Now, get this. After we've hidden the money, you tie me up in that chair real tight so I can't even move. And you lock yourself in this closet and drop the key down inside the wall through that hole. Do you get it? You see, when Sheriff Tuttle comes by tomorrow, he finds the old man dead, the money gone, and us helpless. And we blame the whole thing on Luke. Yes, Edward. It seemed perfect. In a few hours, the box of money would be yours. After dinner, Mr. Blake retired and soon fell asleep. But there was no sleep for you, Edward Matthews. No. 
You had work to do. And now, at last, the time had come. You picked up the heavy iron stove poker and went to his room. Can you get it out? No, I 
Oh, yes, the key's way down inside the wall. What's the matter? Your cigarette. Honey, you left it burning. It fell off the table. No, it burned. Can you see it? Yes, it. It's on the old man's sweater. The one he left on his chair. It's burning either it's smoking. Can you do something? Can't you get through it? No, I can't even move. These cords, this, this chair is so heavy on it. It's spreading. Thank you.